Steve, there are more questions than answers tonight about what may have unfolded on October 1st when the El Faro lost all contact, but even more questions about where the sunken cargo vessel may be. NTSB sent their vice chairman here tonight. She told the media that the agency plans to stay in the area for the next seven to ten days. She says they will not determine or speculate on probable cause while on scene. Without knowing exactly where the El Faro ship may be, the agency plans to use interviews, marine logs, maintenance records, and engineering aspects. One question that we haven't been able to get answered right now is the timeline of events when it comes to the vessel's known mechanical failure and the flooding that was alerted to the Coast Guard on Thursday morning. We are still unsure at this point whether one factor led to another, whether it was storm related or whether it resulted as part of an existing mechanical issue. Now, the NTSB says the only real way to find out what went on in those 12 hours after contact was lost is to find the ship's voyage data recorder, or VDR. Now, here's what the chairman had to say when asked about the VDR's pinging device, which may be the key to locating El Faro. The uh, voyage data recorder is uh, a, um, a, an instrument that activates upon um, touching water. So once, once it is actually in the water, it will begin pinging, and it has a battery life of 30 days. Uh, the question is, has the pinging been heard? And not to my knowledge. And new tonight, a message to loved ones in Maine from the family of Dylan Mecklin. He is one of the Maine crew members on board, a 23-year-old. The family writing to me today saying, Last night while we were in Jacksonville, we watched videos and looked at pictures of many people coming together to show their support for Dylan, the crew, and the families. The outpouring of support was and is very heartwarming. In the overwhelming situation that we are in, the gesture helped us feel the support and love of our tight-knit community back home. We couldn't feel more appreciative to be in everyone's thoughts and prayers. Although we wish we could have been at the vigil, it was important for us to be in Florida, closer to the search, the other families, and the hope for Dylan. Now, the Coast Guard continues to search the waters near the Bahamas with an extensive growing fleet of ships and aircraft, and they are still referring to it as a search and rescue mission. Tonight, we're live in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm Katie Thompson, WMTW News 8.